I'm glad you found me. <laughs> Selfishly, I'm glad you found me. Question is if you're glad you found me, but you know, I'll take what I can what I can get here. Uh, add maneuver. So I'm gonna set up a maneuver for timing. 27.9 meters per second is not gonna be a lot of speed to equal out. 7.9 meters a second. That's actually exactly how much fuel we have to do this maneuver. So that's actually pretty good. <laughs> You are glad you found me. Good. At least I get to be a little bit entertaining. All right, so this is 13 minutes away. Let's, uh, let's warp that in. If this is right, I should on our very last drop of fuel equal our speed to the station, which uh, yep, there it is, crashing more or less as we get to the station. <laughs> uh, this monstrosity of a, of a station, this beautiful monstrosity that I've created. It does speed back up after it figures itself out, but... Alright, we'll probably have maybe two seconds of fuel. So about one second away from our closest intersect is where I'm going to burn here. And it's just very last sliver of fuel. The bigger they are, the harder they crash. It's very true. Not as bad as when I was originally streaming this game. Way back. About four years ago, I was streaming on an i3 system. And I was streaming and recording. And uh, my graphics card was a potato. So those were not good times. $10,000 worth of computer hardware later, I still have problems. All right, so that looks good. Let's switch to orbital view, aim prograde, and let's eject this uh, second stage that's done its job. But now it's in the way of our docking port. So we're going to eject that off. Those. Now, I gotta figure out where is the open ring on this. There should be one open docking port. And it's all the way over here. So that's the one we wanna go for. So we're gonna have to uh, kinda go around here. not pull a, uh, oh, still auto-aiming. <laughs> Let's not pull a, uh, a progress mirror situation here. Let's just go right for it and uh, not smash into anything. Okay, RCS on. Are we not getting... Oh, still on orbit. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, we look pretty good. So we'll come around the other side. We'll dock into that last open port. The station is seeing a lot more use than I ever expected it to. Let me see. Are we getting there? Yeah, we're kind of, kind of drifting off. Let's.
Next step is to pull the musk and make your rockets reusable. It's very true. And I would rather do the musk style than space shuttle style, but unfortunately I think with this game, space shuttle style is probably what's going to work. Seeing as I, I did accidentally make a successful space shuttle earlier in the in the season. It was, it was interesting. It was kind of a joke. I was, I was making a space plane and I I wanted to try and launch it on top of a rocket uh, dinosaur style, like the um, the actual craft called the dinosaur, not uh, not the short armed dinosaur. Um, and I kind of joked after it didn't work that I should try it in an asymmetric shuttle stack, and uh, well, it worked. <laughs> Why it worked, I don't know. I was actually kind of angry that it worked so smoothly. And then, of course, it broke up on re-entry, but there was no one on board, so, eh. It was actually meant to be a joke. I was like, yeah. This will be funny to watch how bad I fail at making a, uh, an asymmetric launch vehicle, and, well, it just, uh, it just worked. Now, I did do it slightly more um, Russian brand style, because the, the tank itself did have an engine. <laughs> too good. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm no, I'm no, uh, I'm no professional. That's for sure. Especially when I do stuff like this and uh, leave myself in staging mode and not docking mode while I'm trying to dock. Although a lot of people I know don't bother to use the whole docking mode thing. They just use the extra control set. And um, I've just never gotten used to that. I've never really been that good at doing that. So let's control from here so I can actually see what I'm doing a little bit. Uh, yeah, I messed us up our, our line up there. So let's... Uh, RSS off, rotational mode. Let's switch that to here. Back to linear. Just like that old saying. Now I, know, now I want to know. <laughs> Pique my interest. Just to know what saying could, could line up to that. We are going to have a progress situation here. We're going to have a progress mirror situation. That was close. This is what happens when I uh, act like a rookie all of a sudden. It's actually just to prove my point that I'm not a professional. I think that's exactly why that happened. Okay. All right. Forward again so we can actually see prograde. Use the docking node. Stop trying to eyeball it there, Steve. You can do it. Let me see. Anyone can build a bridge that stands, but an engineer can build a bridge that barely stands. That is actually one of my favorite sayings. <laughs> I did take um, my healthy dose of engineering courses. And that is probably the best uh, way to describe a good engineer. All right. So we got another crew up. Uh, we now need to start transferring them. So Newstead is going to take command of the vehicle. transfer to. Why is he not... Uh, huh? What did it say? Target switching locked. I'm not trying to switch target. I'm trying to have him transfer. Can you not transfer? Okay. 
Okay. There it goes. That was a little bit odd. Let's do that again. I don't know what it is doing there. I've done this a million times before. Oh, well, that one worked. I want to go into chemical engineering in college. That's actually a pretty good field. I can actually do a lot with that. Actually, you know, I never needed to um, retract these in the first place. Those extra solar panels. All right, now I need to pick out some crew that I could send along. So I've already got Newstead, Newsy, and Seven. Uh, Bob and Cabin, Cabin, whatever that is, are in the lab, so I don't want to take them. We do have Ronner as a spare scientist. He might be our guy. Yeah, I can see what, how that would happen. I can see how that could get oversaturated. One of those things where it's almost to the detriment that there's so many applications because everyone is going to go down that path knowing that they have a lot of options. And it just kind of leaves you without a lot of options. <laughs> Odd to say. Now, I only have one engineer on the station, so I don't think that's a problem. I don't think there's going to be a case where I really need them unless I accidentally trigger some parachutes and need to repair them, but um, I've got six landing craft to pick from. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. So let's transfer Bill. Alright, so we now have a full crew. I hope he's medical, not chemical. Well, I think in his case, um, if it's if, if it's Bill, he might just be um, some sort of explosive engineering technician. This is Kerbal, after all. All right, now the the tricky bit. I need to get this fuel tank. What's well, supposed to be a fuel tank? First of all, we need to get it so it's balanced. And I'm going to abuse the fact that this AJ-10 engine used to be much lower in the tech tree and that we still have a few in space. Because our current tech tree does not have them unlocked despite it being still the most efficient engine, even after it was nerfed. At least for chemical rockets. Alright. It's, it's more or less balanced. I just need to... Hmm. Actually, maybe transfer some off of this? Well, I guess not. Transfer some to it. Let's do that. Ugh. Just hate waiting for fuel to transfer. I just don't want this to be uh, weighted off center. But we'll undock it, flip it around, dock it to the back of the transfer vehicle. That'll be the uh, main propulsive unit. 
We'll disconnect from the station, we'll rendezvous with the lander already in orbit at the correct inclination for Minmus, and then we can head on our way to Minmus. We already have the engineering lab, or the engineering... What would it be? What would they actually call it? Refinery, I guess? For uh, making rocket fuel? In reality, I guess you'd make that in a lab. But... Balance. Feng Shui. I dig it. That is exactly what I mean. Uh, let's see. This... Uh, yeah, let's just refill these. It is kind of weird to think that I'm, uh, this was originally just a throwaway fuel tank and I'm now going to be using it as a transfer vehicle. <clears throat> it is a little larger than I probably would have would have put on for him in this transfer, but, um, you know, go big or go home. Oh, let's do that before I can actually fill it up all the way. <laughs> It's fine. Very true. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm kind of amazed. I've only lost two Kerman, considering uh, Valentina died day one uh, in a jet crash, which is basically a tradition. Uh, losing astronauts and cosmonauts um, in trainer jet crashes. Um, I couldn't have a space program without doing that. And then uh, Jebediah, him was just kind of a, a, a dumb kind of, I don't know why I did it move. He snuck on board a, a rocket, or I say he snuck on board, I forgot to check to see that there was no one there. And uh, instead of ejecting him safely, and just landing the capsule like a normal human being, I decided to, uh, while the rocket was already in flight, try and turn it around and propulsively land it. So that was more a conscious decision that we no longer need Jeb. <laughs> more than a, uh, an accident. We need to... Hopefully not clip our antenna, because I just realized we're kind of close there. We're going to go under. <laughs> yeah, the face bomb's probably, probably justified. Yeah, trying to propulsively land an entire rocket was maybe not the best idea to do while it was manned. Which actually, I think, I think I had it. I really do think I had it. Um, there was just the very last second I meant to hit the Z key for full throttle. I hit the X key and cut throttle. I think I would have had it. If I hadn't fat fingered, I think I had it. I did once in Sandbox, and I have the video somewhere, I really need to put it up on our YouTube channel. Um, I did, actually another time I was intentionally making a, a space shuttle, I had uh, solid rocket boosters uh, blow up one, uh, well, both of the wings, and I still managed to propulsively land the shuttle. So I thought that was, I thought that was pretty good. Just kind of did a, a nice, neat splashdown. Oh, now let's see. We want to disable RCS. Switch over to rotation. And rotate, please. Wow, this thing is heavy. <laughs> you might have had better luck with a giant lasso. That that could be. 
I'm not going to refute that. I have no evidence to the contrary. This is really as fast as this is going to turn for me. Is this really? We are at full yaw right now. Q flight of the bumblebees. Um. <laughs> Come on. This is remarkable. That's what this is. <laughs> All right. Now, stopping the spin, I am probably going to resort to using RCS. I hate using RCS for maneuvers that I can do with a reaction wheel, but uh, this is not one of them. Okay, go back over to linear. Get to back off a little bit. We still need to correct our rotation a little bit as well. Good thing we loaded those tanks. Maybe I should have left the, uh, well, I guess I couldn't. I didn't have anywhere to put the fuel. I was going to say, maybe I should have left the liquid fuel tanks empty, but, uh, you know, typically you need somewhere to put the fuel in order to do that. There's a <laughs> his big chunk of something like that. Yeah, this thing's a, this thing's a, a fat beast right now, and I am burning through mono propellant much faster than I should be burning through mono propellant, uh, thanks to these little corrections here. I, I hate that it does those auto corrections when the reaction wheel can do them just fine. I know there is a way to disable that. I know you can go through and do the actuation toggles and disable the certain actuation toggles. Um, but do I trust myself to do that properly? No. No, I do not. It's <laughs> your engine engine. Well, I have done that before. Uh, it has not stopped me. Running out of monoprop to dock. I actually did um, a very difficult thing and uh, docked with an unpowered target at one point that was uh, spinning without monoprop. So there's a, a one up on the old Russians there with their Salyut 7 dock. Yes, it was impressive that you docked to a station that was inert and was spinning in three axes, but I did it without a reaction control system. Like Interstellar, yep. Have you ever seen the Interstellar um, spoof they did with the uh, the Elon Musk redub, where he was landing his SpaceX rocket that uh, did a splashdown recently? Cause that was that was amazing. I think if you just search. Elon Musk Interstellar on YouTube. I think it'll come up. That is more watchable than this. I will say that. <laughs> I will say that without, without any shame. It's really quite good. Lining up our dock in the meantime. 
Pretty good. Perfect duck. Perfect duck. Make sure there's no auto strut problems here. It is all disabled. Excellent. All right. So we have our transfer vehicle. Finally in play. I gotta figure out where our lander is at the moment. Um, it is on a much tighter orbit than us and it is ahead of us. That's not good. We do have to make an inclination change anyway. So, might as well figure that out first. Well, let's see. Full crew already on board. We're fully fueled. A little low on monoprop, but we got a huge monoprop tank on the, uh, the actual craft itself. So I'm not too worried there. Let's uh, let's undock this. best part is the blunt yes <laughs> just the what are you doing like it doesn't like it doesn't even matter it's got it under control it's really well done though that that's what stunned me is how well done that was let's back up just a little faster here so we can start doing some maneuvers. I'm going to have to tune the, these RCS thrusters so it doesn't cause any kind of rotation every time I use them. Because I can see that definitely happening right now. Odds from God plan. I'm trying to remember which that was. I might need the, re the refresher. Extend, extend. Solar panels back. I'm gonna tune them to be, <laughs> be minor. Something along those lines. Now. Might fire the thruster just to give us a little bit of distance. But what I am going to do is I'm now going to do the thing I hate doing on stations and auto strut. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to disable auto strut right now. <laughs> I don't like that wobbling. Please don't wobble. All right. Well, I feel like it's done messing around. That almost just became a tuning fork. Ah, a bunch of tungsten rods up in the orbit so we could drop them on cities with the force of a nuke. That's what that was. It's been a long time since I read about 
on that one. I think my most recent, um, I had no idea that existed. If you want to strut your stuff, you got to do it yourself. It's true. Now, the one thing that does weird me out, though, the whole idea of these basically being magnets for docking ports, in real life, there's no such thing. There's It's a probe <laughs> that goes in, and hard clamps, so you'd be able to do maneuvers with those hard clamps in place. And it just seems a little silly. Yeah, the big issue would definitely be if we accidentally dropped one. Although there, there are nuclear reactors in um, low Earth orbit, if I'm not mistaken, from earlier Russian satellites that were actually nuclear powered. I might be wrong on that one. It does seem to strike a bell. The, uh, the one that always kind of weirded me out at least as long as I've known about it, which has not actually been all that long, um, was all the extra Apollo missions that we had lined up and ready if we had gotten funding for them from... I say we like I was actually part of it, but if the country had put funding into it. The, uh, the Apollo... Venus flyby has got to be the crazy one out of that that I, I just love. It's like part Skylab, part moon mission, but Venus flyby instead, and EVAs and launched probes. It's kind of it's kind of bizarre. I'd sign up. Those rods have approximately two metric buttloads of kinetic energy. <laughs> I'm glad you specified metric. It's it's good to make sure that we're we're using the same measurements. Which actually, I don't know if you knew this. That's where the whole concept of um, delta v. You probably do know this. But that's where the whole concept of uh, delta v came from, uh, because it's basically unitless. So German scientists and American scientists could uh, use the same measurements very easily. And all agree. Why is this not letting me... Can we just... Aha! There we go. See, so yeah, the whole idea of, of um, specific impulse, all it really means is uh, whatever unit of measure single unit, or actually not even just single unit, but whatever unit of measure you're using for the weight of your fuel, the amount of time it provides that same unit of measure in thrust in seconds is your delta V. So it doesn't matter if you're saying uh, one pound of, how many seconds one pound of fuel will provide one pound of thrust, or if you're saying how many seconds one kilogram of fuel will provide one kilogram of thrust because it's uh, unitless. that because of that one Mars lander that crashed because of a conversion error. That actually was in place before that, so I don't know what their problem was. Because that actually came from um, early on. That, that was... Um, that was... I want to say that was around the very beginning. I think it was right when we were doing Project Paperclip and stealing those German scientists. Ooh, I'm not facing the maneuver. I'm facing prograde. What am I doing? I was like getting ready to burn prograde. And we're also in linear. <laughs> it's also in linear mode there. So that wasn't going to do me any good. Might help if I um. That's for the pilot only. We're just going to do our maneuver a little bit late. It's not a huge issue, right? We also don't have our engine activated, which uh, typically you want your engine activated. Yeah, that one was impressive. Oh, someone did a math error. And boom. That's just embarrassing. 
that I haven't done dumber. Um, is it just me or does this look like it's just gonna spontaneously explode? That might need a dressing. This does look like a, a giant Kraken invitation. Okay. And that's even, that's even auto strutted. So maybe this needs to be auto strutted? I don't know. How bad did I mess up our inclination by the late burn? Um, not awful. Okay. The next maneuver ready then. This is more me making little errors, which makes it, I think, more entertaining. It did land technically. <laughs> well played. It did indeed. Okay, now this is stable. That really is what I needed to do, is just make that pilot only at the top. And now it seems to be fairly easy to control, actually, considering its mass. Significantly less delta V than I expected it to have, though. It is about 30 tons, so I guess I, I shouldn't complain. I just had people like Bob Ross. <laughs> oh, we're, we're already quoting Bob Ross today on the stream. That's good. That's a good sign. Alright, so time warping into this maneuver. Alright, just a one second burn. I do miss when these were much higher specific impulse. Wish they didn't nerf these. Okay, that was fairly accurate. A little bit more correction. All right. Now we're on the correct inclination. And we are way out of position <laughs> to actually rendezvous with the lander. So, I might just kind of leave that in for a little bit. And just kind of let them do their thing. Because it should pretty much catch up. Now, I, was, I said the same thing about some of these other craft out here. And uh, that's yet to happen. Cleanup probe is kind of catching up, actually. Relay Network uh, Satellite 1 needs to also fix itself. This is supposed to be a um, equilateral triangle of signal, and it is not. So this one's on a slightly tighter orbit to try and get it ahead. So that'll be a good while before that's in good position. Our, I think our network around Minmus is more accurate. Yeah, slightly more accurate. Not perfect. It's not a it's not a perfect equilateral triangle, but uh, our survey satellite should help a little bit because that does have a relay antenna on it as a backup. Which um ah okay, our station module is in capture. I don't know what it's being flagged as because it's not showing up on the screen here. So I have to go back to. Uh, Space Center. And 
That means we'll be ready to receive the lander and start missions immediately. Well, as immediately as 11 days of transfer to Minmus. I'm going to see if there's any new contracts I can do. Uh, no. And... Bum, bum, bum. Of course, I never did title our uh, refinery as such. Because that would make it too easy. We don't want to make things easy, do we? Aha! Uh -huh. Here you are. Still two hours away. I will definitely time warp that. So let's go ahead and fly it. Next time you go out and get yourself some socks, get golden toes. 10 out of 10. I have a few. They're not bad. Definitely actually good. And as I said, I am that, that right level of old that... Uh, I am excited about such things. Okay. So I didn't make the screw up I made with our rover, which by the way, whatever happened to our rover? Oh, there it is. Yep. Still still falling back to Kerbin. <laughs> I won't make that same mistake of uh having our solar panels out of alignment. But um we're looking pretty good. We're in signal. We have power. Yes, the thick heel is important. I always hate if you have like really thin socks at the heel. You just get that chafing on the back of shoes. At least if you wear, like I do, I, I wear dress shoes for every occasion. I don't know why. It's like to torture myself, I guess. Once you break in the leather. So let's set up my maneuver first, and then I'll warp to it. Okay, that's going to be our capture. And let's just try and do a high-speed rendezvous like we do with uh, our moon station transfers. Hmm, not as convenient, given the wild inclination difference. Um, I can get it close, though, and then make an adjustment at the sending node when the time comes. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, this craft turns very easily. I was not expecting that. This is another heavy one. This is uh, 27, almost 28 tons. Long sock or short sock? What's your preference? I like long socks. I'm a long sock kind of guy. All right, let's warp to maneuver. Yeah, somehow just long socks, dress shoes. I'm a comfortable man. I'm I'm weird for that, especially considering I live in a very constantly hot area of the country, so <laughs> usually that leads to things being uncomfortable, uh, but I do it anyway. There's no excuse to not look your best. Good, I'm not alone. You like the longer sock. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one. I tell everyone, everyone everyone got confused why I stopped wearing a tie every day. I did it before I started streaming, but 
Everyone at work was very confused when I stopped wearing my tie every single day. And the answer was, I got too fat for my clothes. Yep. I can I can totally respect that. I used to vacation in Arizona. That that's it's a really nice area. Like it's no matter where you are, there's some good parts of that state. There's definitely bad parts, but any part of that state you're in, in close travel to somewhere good. At least in my opinion. Probably changes when you live there. I, I, I can totally get that. Definitely parts of the country I lived in that when I was there I hated it. And now I'm like, oh, I want to go visit. Alright, here we go. Doing our capture burn. This should be setting up the first stage of our rendezvous with the Deep Space Gateway. That's true. I did live in um, Maine for a year, and that was that was very nice. However, there was lots and lots of snow. <laughs> they say there's still four seasons in Maine. There's almost winter, winter, still winter, and road construction. Uh, let's see. So now at descending node. Oh, now at descending node, I'll find out that I am um, absolutely heading the wrong way round. It's a good time to find that out. Well, no, I'm not. Why is that making that seem like that's a ridiculous difference in... Oh, because it's descending node. Gotcha. It's making it look like I was way off there. It's really not. That? Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, this should be right. What the heck? Station is going this way. We're go oh, we are going that way. Ha! Oh, I am stupid. Okay, there we go. I have those moments. I have those moments. So this is going to be one heck of a maneuver. Oh, you mean in Arizona? Yeah, definitely. Grand Canyon, Monument Valley. See, I um, I really enjoyed uh, Sun Valley. That was that was my kind of place. Everyone was kind of not keen on the the insanely dry heat, and I found out the hard way a lot of times why um, certain things were plastic that was used to being metal uh, when I burned my hands. But I got pretty used to it, and I enjoyed vacationing there while I did. Now this is gonna be a this is gonna just be a crazy maneuver. We are going to totally flip around. Actually, what we need to do, we don't need to do. Yeah, we don't need to do any craziness. Why am I making this more complicated than it needs to be? I don't need to do that with an ascending node and a descending node. We just need to go retrograde now. This is Minmus. Nothing is hard at Mimmus. Mmm. Yeah, I think that that'd probably be more my speed. But um, I really didn't mind it. I didn't mind the heat. Alright, so we are going to completely cancel our orbit in this terrifying maneuver, and we're going to come back around the other direction. And voila! We, <laughs> we are now uh, heading in the correct 
correct direction. Uh, we do need to severely fix... Oh yeah, no, I could I could totally see that. Playing baseball there. See, I live um, in Florida myself, so I can relate. But at least in Florida, it's flat and it's on the ocean, and you get breeze. That is only going to help me a certain amount here. I am totally blowing this. The humidity does factor, that is true. The humidity does really suck. I will say this, I, I kind of got to the point where my expectations were lowered for, for dealing with humidity because I did also live in um, Tennessee for a while and uh, god that air just hangs on you it's just no breeze at all to save you okay that's the node change I want to make. And I want to retrograde a bunch. Keep balancing it out with... Uh... There you go. Okay. Alright. We're getting a proper maneuver now. I'm just playing with this maneuver node like a, like a crazy person, but I think I'm finally getting results. Point two looks pretty good. I'll take that. Hmm. It's really not that much of a change, even. I'm gonna have to thrust limit this down quite a bit. I'm thinking maybe a four second burn like I, I tend to like the four second burn because I can I can time it evenly and easily and then uh, let's go ahead let's let's warp and I don't have anything else doing um, transfer right now so I don't really have to worry too much about other maneuvers might miss a uh, potential rendezvous but those always come back around Yeah, Tennessee was rough. I was not I was not the fan of, of Tennessee weather. Second burn, very low thrust. Trying to make this as exact as possible. Because this is going to give me point 0.1 separation and only 34.7 meters per second of correction despite the crazy difference in orbits. God, Minmus makes everything so easy. So hard, but easy at the same time. This would not have gone this crazily in moon orbit. But that's just fine. So we're going to set a node just to mark our closest approach. We're just going to get a little closer. Gives us a chance to go retrograde to target. Go
go to full throttle. And I can time warp the rest of the way in. This used to be a very difficult thing to do when I didn't have the, uh, the relay network set up around Minmus, but having that makes a gigantic difference. So we are very rapidly approaching the Deep Space Gateway. <laughs> it's fun not having gravity, not really. Very true. It's good for a mining base. That much is true. Cheap takeoff and, uh, and landings. Or landings and takeoff, I guess would be really. It'd be the opposite way around, coming from a station. Okay. Now, I'm going to actually use the engines to get us a little closer. Because we are going to have to undock this module to then dock it to the station, because I am very bad at uh, planning. I say that. I shouldn't say I'm bad at planning, considering my job title is as a planner. It would be bad. It's a bad thing to claim, Steve. But it's true. Be a better engineer. All right, kill that node. Go retrograde the target. Good for maneuvers, bad for or for orbits. That's very very true. It does make it kind of a pain. Wow, well, this is um. Just maybe we go in a little closer than I probably should do. Um, uh, nah, nah, we're good, we're good. Oh, hey, Mosey, thanks for jumping on the desk. <laughs> Bad PR, yeah. That is very true. So this, I want to dock actually on the underside of this, don't I? It is indeed a cat. It's one of my two. I never picked cats, but they did pick me. Oh, shoot. Okay, now... There we go. Let's just back off. Flip back around. And now I need to undock. And then redock this, uh, this module. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, actually. How much fuel do I have left in it? I have a ton of monoprop left in it the very least. I probably shouldn't just trash it. I do kind of have open ports. Sort of. Hmm. That will be interesting. See how I decide to do that. Might have to just uh, disable some of these solar panels and go for the top node. Can we, uh, yeah, okay. That should be lined up on that axis. This axis should be lined up. We're a fish person. <laughs> yeah, fish are uh, definitely the maintenance kings. I say that, actually, it is a pain in the ass to take care of fish, depending on the fish. But they don't pee on your floor ever. For that, they've endeared themselves to me. Okay. Now the 
question is which way is up on this? Of course, I would block the little hex node with a battery, so I can't see which way is up. So I'm going to assume that that way is up. And we're going to see what assuming does to a man. Ah, I was actually right. Okay. Okay, this is lovely. Yeah, I could have planned that a little better. But, actually, not too shabby. realize I'm controlling this in reverse. I was doing everything eyeballing it, so it wasn't really a problem, but as soon as I looked at the nab ball, I realized I'm probably going to regret that in a minute. Ooh, that does some weird tipping. Okay, let's get our axis set up so it's a little easier to do. Okay. Oh, jeez. The wobbling. The painful, painful wobbling. Okay, don't hit the solar panels. Don't hit the solar panels. Don't hit the solar panels. All right. That didn't go horribly. See any um, stray auto strut aside from the ones that are on here, which is maybe not the best idea. Okay. At least have room. Nemo Clown, Black Clown, and a Pika, which cleans the tank, the shrimp, and snails. That is actually um, very well organized. See, I can respect that. Alright, I got radiator set up for this guy. We will have manufacturing in space very shortly. Now, I need to get this other tank loaded up, so I'm going to have to retract some solar panels and put this on the zenith. Fish do the cleaning? You don't have to. That's very smart. That is a level of organization I think I, I can't handle. Which is probably, I mean, I say that in a, and I'm a cat person and all that kind of thing. Well, forcibly a cat person. But, uh, I don't know. Cats are, are only good because they, they really take care of themselves in terms of socially. You just kind of ignore them. Clean their poop. That's about it. Feed him. Alright, this one's looking pretty smooth right here. If I do this right, I might be able to redeploy some of those solar panels. Oh, because I'm in rotation. Huh. That's a thing. That, Steve, is a thing. Okay. Almost there. 
that you're a planner. Yes. <laughs> My job title is actually planner. I like to say I do it as a as a job, so uh, I don't do it at home. There we go. Okay, this has auto strut enabled somewhere, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Off you go. That is a weird bug. But okay. All right. We've got a respectable station going on here. I don't know why this one's being so wobbly. But I'll, I'll take it. Drop some fuel into this tank. Thing is, I'm still gonna have monoprop on this. So. I don't think this is gonna be enough room to dump this. By a long shot, actually. kind of clips. Tracked it before it breaks anything. That's always fun. Yeah, people don't realize um, laziness actually is probably one of the best motivators uh, ever. You want to find out how to get uh, a job done efficiently? Find someone who you'd claim is lazy? And they're actually just smart. They find an easier way. Well, there's some people who are just actually lazy and they suck. But <laughs> but then there's people who uh, are just smart. People call them lazy. Work smarter, not harder. Which engine is still active? That one's still active. So shouldn't that one be? Yep. And shouldn't that one be? Yep. Okay. Good to know. Why those weren't uh, showing that way? That's kind of scary. Oop, not gear action group. Light action group. All right. I just realized this refinery is a great idea and all, but uh, it's going to get in the way of our. This panel, at least, is going to get in the way of our landers. And we're not going to need all those panels, I think. Hmm. Procrastination and BSing. See? That is that is the sign of an intelligent person. Okay, so I'm going to have to rotate this. Because I just realized I, I docked this incorrectly. And it's a really frustrating easy fix I just did it wrong for whatever reason and I just extra did it wrong for whatever reason okay wait a minute wait a minute okay there we go oh, why are you why are you rotating on your own That's interesting. It is now gyrating and um, doing it on its own. Now we go back to RCS. Linear mode. There we go. Better. Now, that's the way it's supposed to be. Uncomfortable amount of wobbling. I like the uncomfortable amount of wobbling. I'm 
know why that looks so funny. <laughs> yeah, it it does just kind of look like that the trick when people are kids and they want to shake the pencil real quick. It's made of rubber. Yes, well the station's made of rubber. Now the good news now we can actually get to our two docking ports for our landers. We do have one lander we'll be getting on the way shortly with the crew transfer. I don't know where the heck I'm going to dock the crew transfer. Um, well, I'll figure that out, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. I make things difficult. I think that might more or less be where I call it a night because I think my brain's starting to hurt. I have not nearly given myself enough time to drink my traditional beers. <laughs> but, I want to thank, we have our, our new subscriber, uh, Ginger Dude. So, thank you for joining. And, uh, of course, anyone, if you want to see uh, more, we have all our previous streams on YouTube.com slash Bro down there at the bottom. I uh, dump all our streams on there. It is a buttload of content, um, so bear with us there. I will eventually edit something down and do stream summaries. But for the moment, we stream almost every single night between 7 and 9. Pretty close, Eastern Standard Time. And, uh, of course, you can always catch us there if you just want to catch the next one. But that being said, thank you guys. And good night.